him, bless him, bless him. Bless him, bless him. Good morning, GWAC. Amen. We truly, truly honor the Lord for being here on this morning. God's Way Apostolic Cathedral, a non-denominational ministry. Uh, it may be gloomy outside on Sunday, December the 11th, but we always thank God for his glory being on the inside of us. Amen. The song that was playing was I Got to Make It Bless Him to That City. Hmm. If it costs my life, amen. And we understand, or hopefully after the message this morning, bless him, will understand that that's exactly what it entails. Amen. We have to give up ourselves. Amen. Amen. We're going to go before the Lord. Dear Lord, we thank you on this morning. We truly thank you, oh God, for who you are. Oh, God, for waking us up this morning in our right minds. Oh, God, for the use and activities of all of our limbs. For your goodness and your kindness and your mercy and your love, oh, God. Oh, God, we ask that you come again in the midst of this service. Oh, God, we ask that you remove April completely out of the way. And let your words speak through me. Amen. I don't want to utter not one single solitary word that does not come from the mind, the heart, the spirit of Christ. Not one. Oh, God. So we ask, oh, God, that you filter what you want to say to your people through me. Oh, God. We are compelling as you have uh, commanded us to do, oh, God. So we are asking you to convict this morning, oh God, and once those individuals, oh God, have been convicted, oh God, we ask that they act on that conviction, not just to be touched, oh God, but that they move hastily towards you, oh God, towards salvation, bless them to act this day, not another, but this day, oh God, to seek you, oh God, let the words of my mouth, oh God, let them, oh God, let me speak them with power. Let me speak them with anointing, oh God. Let me speak them with clarity, oh God. Let me speak them, oh God, with precision, oh God. That it reach that target, that it reach that heart. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We praise you. We give you all the glory and the honor. That is due your name. Amen. We thank you. Amen this morning. God is awesome this morning. Now, last week we touched on, we talked about, amen, the, the countdown. And what are we counting down for? We said last week, amen. The reason why we are doing this, the reason why we are living this life is that we're preparing for the life after or our afterlife. Amen. We preached this in, back in 2014, a couple of years ago. Amen. But there's so many things that have transpired within just the last two years that God has said it's time now again yet to revisit the life after, the afterlife, however you want to call it, when we leave here. There is something after. There is life after death. Contrary to what the, the world is saying, society is saying, contrary to what the universalist will say, once you die, that's it. We just magically, mystically just disappear. There's nothing else. We just go into oblivion or wherever there is. But it's not according to 
their perspective, huh? <laughs> we're not going. Our, our soul is not landing anywhere. We're just kind of in this state. Huh? But we come to put that myth to rest this morning because the Bible is very definitive about where we're going to land. Bless him. Hallelujah. It's only there are only two viable options, huh? Only two. Mm, only two. That our soul has to reside after we go. So don't let the enemy, and let me back up because we got, let me back up a little bit, huh? And I'm going to use the words of Dr. Tony Evans because we believe in giving credit to whomever is due. And he says, what would you think about a policeman that witnessed a juvenile delinquent busting out the windows to your car or breaking into your house and just say, well, boys will be boys. Dismiss it and leave without addressing the crime, huh? Or a fireman arriving on the scene of your house burning and saying, oh, well, the fire will eventually burn itself out. <laughs> Don't you worry. It'll be all right. It'll be all right. Or a physician that has diagnosed you, your body, with a terminal illness and simply tells you, yeah, just take a couple of aspirin. Everything will be all right. You'll be all right. You wouldn't think anything of these people who are charged with preserving your safety and your lives that they're doing their job well or responsibly. Hmm? You wouldn't. I know I wouldn't. Hmm. So how much more would you like that I'm not doing my job as a pastor, huh? If I know about a place like hell that it exists and not warn you, huh? What kind of leader would we be? We would be remiss in our duties as leaders to know about such a dismal, such a horrible place that needs to be avoided at all costs and never utter one single word of warning. Shame on us as leaders if we don't do that. So we're going to obey our calling this morning, huh? By telling you what you need to know to what? To help you make the right choice where your eternity is concerned because that's what we're talking about life after when we close our eyes death is not the end of the story hmm. God said so we gotta talk about it again we well, y'all talk about death too much y'all talk about the afterlife too much I, no we don't you don't hear it enough amen God said too much has happened just in these two little years. Increased wickedness, blatant acts of sin, rejection of the truth, calling right wrong and calling wrong right. Calling right wrong and calling wrong right. We know what's going on in the world. Amen. Blatant sin. Just don't care. I'm going to do what I want to do when I want to do it. And I don't care what you think about what I'm doing when I do it. <laughs> I don't give a real matter what you think. That's how we have. That's what state this world is in right now. So God said you better warn them. Bless him. They think this is for play, play. But no, no, it's for real, real. We're dealing with eternity here. Amen. It's not play, play. God said the people have become complacent. Bless him. No longer is there a sense of urgency. 
urgency to seek salvation and to plan, huh? To plan what's gonna happen to your soul when you depart from this body. Because hmm? <laughs> the Bible tells us in the book of Hebrews 9 and 27, and as it is appointed unto man once to die, but however, nonetheless, <laughs> but after this is the judgment. Huh? We want you to capture this in your mind. Try to go along with us this morning. Amen. We're going to die. And the only way around it is if God happens to come back before we die. And if our works are still undone, we're still going to have the same results. So it doesn't matter. Huh? The point is judgment is coming. said we have an appointment huh this is an appointment bless him one that we will not miss we know how it is sometimes we get in a hurry or sometimes we may forget because we didn't document that we had a doctor's appointment we didn't have it documented that we had to go thus and so we had an appointment scheduled but somehow somewhere we forgot that appointment but God said the appointment with death the appointment with judgment will not be missed bless him oh some can die early huh but not late <laughs> that's 100% certainty the only thing that we do not know is where when how what we're going to die of, but we're going to leave this old body. It's inevitable. It means we ain't got no control over it. It's going to happen so, so. How, what, how must we be? Hmm? How must we be? We must be thinking, first of all, about the inevitable. Uh, to not think about it is to live like people are living right now. Huh? We go to church for an hour or two <laughs> on Sunday, God said, and the rest of the time <laughs> we're not living like there is no death. We're not living like there's life after that there is no inevitable God said that's how we're living they're living like Jill Scott sings they're living life like it's golden <laughs> golden golden that's how they're living like I ain't got a care in the world <laughs> the Bible said be not deceived be not See, don't let the enemy fool you. God is not mocked. He's going to have the last laugh. Whatsoever a man so is, huh? You sowing it. God said, whatever you putting in the table, on the table, whatever you digging, whatever you planting, he said, that's what you are going to sow. You're not me, you, us. Nobody's going to make a fool out of God. God said you sold it. <laughs> that was your shovel in your hand. Huh? That was your mess, your dirt that you dug up. God said, if you don't clean that mess up, you're going to reap what you planted. No, I can do exactly what I, I can live whatever way that I want to live. And after I die, it's over. So I'm just going to do it. <laughs> no consequences. No repercussions. 
<laughs> God said you ain't gonna make no fool out of me. Don't let the devil fool you. <laughs> Don't you know if you were a hell raiser down here, you think we're going back with the Lord? <laughs> If we think we're living a lie and lying and deceiving, God said, he said that flesh and blood is not going to inherit the kingdom of God. You're not going to make it in. So God wants us to be prepared for closing our eyes. Death is but a conjunction. That's all it is. It's not a period. It's just a pause, huh? It's just a stopping station, huh? It's where we're going to transform from one state to the other. Don't let it fool you that that's the end of it. That's all. No. Pause. When you die, pause. It's not over, God said. The word of God said it's not all there is. If you look in the book of James 2 and 26, it clearly tells us about the biblical separation. It's not a cessation of existence. We haven't ceased. We're just sleeping. We're not who we are because of this old flesh, this old body of ours, but it's your soul that God is concerned with. This is just a case. Huh? This is just a case. To contain this, these old bones, to contain these veins, to contain, contain the blood. That's all this is. So when God said enough is enough, when God said you are, you've either done what you were, you were supposed to do. Or you haven't done what you're supposed to do. This body then goes to. Hmm. It goes to Betty Bye. It goes to sleep. Your soul is created in immortality. So where is it going? Where it's going is up to me. Where your soul lands in eternity is up to us. As Dr. Evans said, when they bring you, when they bring you to your funeral, you're the only one not there. <laughs> you're the only one that's not there. Your soul, once you leave it, immediately goes out of your body. It separates, but it's got to be delivered to one or two places. What? Heaven or the lake of fire. Heaven or the lake of fire. There's no such thing. There's nowhere in the Bible. And if you find it, please, you can inbox me. You can tweet me. YouTube, wherever. Please call me and show me where the Bible said that there is a state of purgatory that in betwixt, in between, like these the devil, the enemy, huh? They're out there purporting this nonsense that I'm just gonna be, I'm gonna be in the resting place once I die. I'm just gonna be kind of in the middle between heaven and hell. Somehow, magically, I'm gonna wind up in heaven. Not found in the Bible, up or down. Nope, in betwixt, in between. And that's up to you this morning. You can play lottery on this issue and say that I'm going to take my chances. You know how it is when I've never done it. Well, playing a game with Monopoly or something else with the, what do you call it, craps and all that stuff. Where you taking a chance and you shooting the dice and hoping, hoping that you hit the numbers. <laughs> <laughs> hoping that you hit the numbers. If you want to take the chance with your salvation, if you want to roll and hit craps, I guess that's what they call it. Shoot craps. 
when it goes against you, <laughs> that 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 one there craps, that's called the lake of fire. That means you lost that round. But what is emphasized so much, we rarely hear anyone talking about. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Prepare for God's coming. Prepare for where you're going to spend eternity. You don't hear it, so we have to. Amen. Oh, God is such a good God. God is such a merciful God. God is such a loving God. God is such. And he is. <laughs> he is wonderful. He is magnificent. He is gracious, huh? He is faithful. But do understand, as the Bible says, so this is not Pastor A up here. Understand, this is coming directly from the ordinance of God. There are two sides to every story. There are two facets of God. There are two sides to God. So if you don't believe me, go to Romans 11, 22 and 23, and I will be reading... The NIV translation, the New International Version, two sides to God. It said, consider, therefore, the kindness and sternness of God. Sternness to those who fail. Hmm? Those that listen to the gospel being preached to them, huh? Those that said, I, I hear what you're saying, Pastor A, but, but today is not the day that I'm hearing the voice of the Lord. I'm not ready to stop doing what I'm doing. I'm having fun out here playing the field. I'm having too much fun playing the field. I'm having too much fun. Cheating on my wife. I'm having too much fun. Stealing money under the table. I'm too crafty. I ain't got caught. So I got to keep on to our mass riches. I'm not tired yet. My God, and he said, those, those that have even tasted of my goodness. He said, how could you? They profess the name of Christ, and yet somehow they allow the enemy. This is not the time to allow the enemy to bamboozle you. This is not the time to cave in to temptation. Now is the time, God said, is to cling unto me as never before. Don't let the devil fool you. We used to hear as we grew up, the song said, Don't let the devil fool you. Don't let him change your mind. Why? Because Jesus is on the other side. So do what? Let him be your God. Oh, don't let, don't let him fool you. Don't let him change your mind. You know that God is a keeper. You know that God is a way maker. You know that he's delivered you time and time again. So hold on to God. Bless him. His everlasting unchanging hand. What can the enemy offer you, huh? Oh, he can give you riches. <laughs> Not disputing that. Maybe able to give you some silver and gold, the bling bling, the house on the hill. Suited and booted, got the latest technology, got it all. <laughs> but the key to all of that, it is temporal. It's called a distraction, huh? It's called a deterrent, huh? 
And we're gonna talk about it hopefully next week. We we only going to the up uh, to, to the to the dark side today. We try to deter you because you might not make it to next week. So we want you to avoid hell, the lake of fire, at all costs. That's what we want to concentrate today on, huh? Avoiding. We're not, God keeps saying, he said, we're not, we're not going to get around it. We're not going to sidestep judgment. Well, that's what you think, no? 2 Corinthians 5 and 10 says what? The NSB translation said, for we must all, A-L-L, me, you, everybody, must We negotiate. Well, Lord, um, I think I'm gonna pass the judgment, and I'll see you on the other side. I think I have some. Yeah, yeah. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each one of us may be recompensed. If we don't know what that means, huh? That means that God is going to pay us according to what we have done, huh? Or not done. For the deeds done in this body, huh? According to what he has done, according to what April has done, whether good or bad. And God said, even no matter what I say today, listen and listen well. We're compelling, huh? We're admonishing, huh? And we're praying that God convicts you and that you make the change toward heaven this day. But the Bible lets us know in Matthew 7, 13 and 14, he said, Enter ye, you, me, at the straight gate. For wide is the gate. And broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And it said that many there be which go in their act. That's why. <laughs> that's why the Bible said hell has enlarged herself daily. Why? To accommodate the occupants. Somebody, no matter how much we teach God said, no matter how much we preach it, no matter how much we live it, somebody is going to end up in the lake because they are saying that's not applicable to me. You're talking about someone else. They've turned a deaf ear to the gospel. And I hate to jump ahead, but we're running out of time. <laughs> the problem is, see, hell was not designed for us. Read your Bibles. It wasn't initially designed for us, but who it was designed for were the devil and his angels, his imps, those that decided that they were going to join the devil's army against God, the ones that God booted out. That's who hell was designed. It was created for them. But God said, <laughs> Since those other folk that have decided I'm not going to listen, those that have said it, I'm not going to choose Christ, those that have rejected God, that's why it's enlarging. But God said, you got to go there too, huh? Now he has those folks joining him. But we don't want you to join the devil's army. We want you to be in the kingdom, join the kingdom of God. Their choices this morning, their choices, you don't have to go to the lake of fire. You don't have to be. Sentence, huh?
to complete exile. Because that's what the lake of fire is, huh? God opens up heaven for us, but we can choose hell. <laughs> and you say to yourself, why would someone choose such a nasty, dark, dismal, stinky, non-stop, fiery furnace, like hell, like the lake. Who would conceivably, in their right mind, do you think you woke up this morning? Did you think when you were a child you actually said, unless somehow there was some dementia or something associated with you then? You wouldn't just say, gee, when I grow up, I want to go to the lake of fire. I, woo, I'm excited about being lost. I'm excited about being rejected. I'm excited about the prospect of burning and burning and burning nonstop. Woo, that excites me. I don't think someone did that. But God is saying, listen and listen well. That's what's translating to God when you say, I don't want you. That's what God is hearing when you say, or when you do this, you turn your back completely on him and his word. It's saying, I choose there. That's my choice. Because if you don't choose God today, you automatically saying, I'm choosing the alternative place. Amen. There's so much. We probably even gotten into a third of this. But in case you don't make it back next week, we're not going to bank on you trying to hear part two, part three, whatever, how far this goes. Listen, this day, God said, when you hear his voice, when you hear his voice, he said, harden not your heart. We got about a minute left. We're going to wrap it up real fast. He said, harden not your heart. If you didn't hear anything else, determine in your mind, I don't want to go to that place. And you'll hear more, hopefully more extensively next week. But if not, you better search the scripture for yourself this day. Go search the scripture and find out about that place that you want, don't want to go to called the lake of fire. You say, well, what do I need to do? Pastor, preacher, April, past day. What must I do to be saved like they said to the apostles? Huh? On the day of Pentecost. Many brother, what shall I do? Well, if you find yourself in the lost state right now, the Bible said in Acts 2 and 38, it said, repent. Repent, which means to become godly sorry for every sin that you have committed in this mortal body from the time of birth until this present time. And saying that I will not commit that sin again. You are completely turning your back on sin. That's repentance. That's first step. And it said be baptized. Some of you. No, it said be baptized. Every one of you in what? In the name of Jesus Christ for the remission, the removal, the forgiveness of your sins. He said, then, huh? Then I'll give you the Holy Ghost. Then you have what it said in uh, Revelation 22 and 14. You have a right to the tree of life then. So don't wait till next week to hear. I've given you, the word of God has given you a way to, a, a, to avoid 
damnation. Search the scripture. The Bible said in them you think that you have eternal life. Search them. Because there is a life after. Don't, 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 don't be, don't be deceived. Ready or not, believe it or not. We've got to leave here and our soul has got to occupy one of those places. So prepare yourself. Reach out to us. Amen. We thank God for you today. Uh, let us know that the, that the word of God, our ministry, uh, has touched your family, has touched you. You can reach us at uh, Facebook at God's Way Apostolic. YouTube at God's Way AC. Twitter at God's Way AC. If you can share stuff that has nothing to do with salvation, if you can take the time to share a fight, a conflict, nonsense, foolery, take the time to share the word of God. If it's helped you, or if you, and then this is pertinent to everybody, you know, if today's, the, this is relative to every living soul. You have loved ones that's not saved. Share the message so that they might hear about the gospel of Jesus Christ. You don't want them to be lost. So share it. And reach out and give us comments and let us know that uh, we're helping you. Amen. God bless you. We love you and we're praying for you. In Jesus' name.